Um, let's start. Next week is going to be Chai Elul, the 18th of Elul. Now, the 18th of Elul happens to be the birthday of the Baal Shem Tov. And it also have to be, happens to be the birthday of the Alter Rebbe. And we won't be able, to, we only have limited time, we won't be able to cover the whole idea of the Baal Hasidus, which was introduced on Chai Elul, both by the Baal Shem Tov and the Alter Rebbe. But we're going to at least try to see, not necessarily Hasidus, but ideas about it. So let's look, and we're going to start with Elijah. Everybody know Elia Wanavi, Elijah the prophet. So let's look at the source of Elijah the prophet, and we're going to see that Elijah, Eliyahu, and the Baal Shem Tov, you would think they would have a lot in common. They actually maybe not have so much things in common. So let's start. Page number three, this is Eliyahu's passing. So it says, Vayelech Eliyahu ve'elisha, Eliyahu and Elisha, who was his student, they went, mina Gilgal, from the Gilgal, Vayomer Eliyahu el Elisha, and Eliyahu said to Elisha, Eliyahu wanted to get rid of Elisha. We're going to see why soon. He says, Shev Napo, he says, stay over here, don't come with me. Ki Hashem shelachani ad Beit Kel, because God sent me until Beit Kel, Vayomer Elisha, but Elisha says, Chai Hashem vechei nafshecha ima azvecha. It says, I'm taking an oath, I'm not leaving your side. We're staying together. Vayardu Beit Kel, and they both went to Beit Kel. Now, what's going on? This is the time that Eliyahu Anavi knows that he's going to go up to heaven. And he doesn't want Elisha to be there when he goes up to heaven. He had some idea. I'm not sure of all the details, but he had some idea. So Rashi says, Shev Napo, he says to Elisha, sit now here, He wanted to push him in, to push him away because of his humility. Why? Because he, wouldn't, he didn't want somebody to see him becoming an angel, so-called. Eliyahu actually became an angel, went up to heaven. He didn't want Elisha to see him when he's taking up to heaven. And he said to him, Eliyahu, Elisha, shev napo. He says, sit now here. Because God sent me to Yericho. He says, I'm not leaving you until Yericho. Again, Eliyahu said to him again, shev napo, sit now here. Because God sent me to the Jordan. And again, Elisha was refusing to let him go. He was accompanying him all the time. And when they were walking, and speak, and behold, a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, Va'ifredu ben shnehem. They separated between Elisha and Eliyahu. Vayal Eliyahu besara shamayim. And Eliyahu went up to heavens. In a physical body. Eliyahu didn't die. He became an angel. Not like the rest of the world. Everybody else in the world, what happened to him? They died. They went back to dust. Eliyahu became an angel. Ve'elisha ro'e. Elisha is seeing all this. And he's shouting, Avi, Avi, Rechev Israel. It says, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, held, he held in his hand and he told him into two parts. And the mantle of Eliyahu fell. Elisha picked it up. And he returned and he stood, Elisha, on the Jordan banks. Yes? Who defines the mantle? Um, like, a, like a talis. Like a talis, like a oh. garment. A garment that he used to wear in those times. Okay? It represents, obviously, the passing off 
of one prophet to another prophet. Yeah, but the simple explanation, it was a piece of government. Okay. So now this is how Eliyahu went up to heaven. This is his life. He became an angel. Let's go back now to the Baal Shem Tov. Yadua Ma'amara Baal Shem Tov. It is known in a talk of the Baal Shem Tov. Shaya b'yecholto la'alot b'sara ha'shamayma. Baal Shem Tov said, I have in my ability to go up to heaven. Like whom? Like Eliyahu. See, we don't have this choice. We don't have the choice whether we become an angel or not. The Baal Shem Tov was given a choice. He says, I have in my ability to go up to heaven. In other words, God permits me to go up to heaven just like Eliyahu. Kmo Eliyahu Navi, just like Eliyahu the prophet. Ela, but the Baal Shem Tov says, I don't want to. Why he doesn't want to? Ela, Ratsashi Yetz Lo Ainyan, but he says, I. I, don't, I want to have the experience of what? Of what, Adam, of what God said to Adam. He says to Adam, you were made from dust and you will return to dust. So he says, I want to return to dust. Ki afarata, because God said to Adam, you are made out of dust. Ve'el afarta shuv, and you will return to become to dust. Can you say that Moshe Rabbeinu may have had the same choice? And choice we never heard that Moshe had the same choice. The only one that I know that Eliyahu that had a choice was the Baal Shem Tov that he said. I don't know if Moshe got a choice. Okay? Ve'lechura, and now something is not understood in these two stories. What's not understood? Kevan she'yeshna ma'ala b'inyan she'v'elafar tashuv. It looks like even though the Baal Shem Tov could have reached the level of Eliyahu Navi. He preferred to go back to earth. Ha'itachen she'etzel Eliyahu anavi ha'ita chasera shlemut zo. So what are we going to say? That, look, Baal Shem Tov had a choice. And when he had a choice, he preferred what? To go back to dust. So that means that Eliyahu was lacking something, that he didn't go back to dust? Is that what it means? That Eliyahu maybe was forced into going up to heaven, but actually he would have preferred to go back to dust? So let's try to understand what's going on. Over here we have a person who was given the choice to become an angel or to go back to dust. And he said, I could become an angel. I don't want to. I want to become back to dust. Okay. But to understand this, it says the completeness of everything we're going to see something very interesting. It says the completeness of every aspect of every person is when he does his specific job that he needs to be, needs to do upon the face of the earth. So if you understand this, what comes out of it? That when it's talking about Eliyahu the prophet, Shemitzad in Yano, Shayahu Tech Lif all, Eliyahu a prophet had a job. He had a job to do. And what was the job? I don't know exactly what the job is yet, but the job required him to become an angel. So that's what he did. He became an angel. And the Baal Shem Tov had a different job. And his job required him to come back to dust. So he preferred to come back to dust. That's what it looked like. So Eliyahu was forced to go up to heavens. That's how he did his job. And because of the Baal Shem Tov, he needed to do his job. He needed to return back to dust. This is how he completed his job. Let me just give... Um, an example for this, from, from a story that I heard. It wasn't a chassid of the Rebbe. It wasn't in a, a, in a yeshiva, a Chabad yeshiva. But there was a person who was in yeshiva. 
He was learning there for four or five years in yeshiva. And he's looking at most of the other students in yeshiva. They were able to go through one page of Gomorrah, another page of Gomorrah, understand it deep. And he's struggling, you know, for four years. Every line, everything, every concept takes him so much time of struggling, of struggling and struggling. And he doesn't understand why he struggles so much and everybody else is having it so easy. So he came to the Rosh Yeshiva and he asked him, what is the, you know, what's the reason? So the Rosh Yeshiva says, look, you come from a non-religious family. Um, your parents did not necessarily good things. You yourself maybe are in your, before you became Baal Tshuva, you didn't eat kosher food, you didn't keep Shabbos, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. So your kind of understanding becomes a little bit harder for you to appreciate godly words. So it's going to be harder for you to appreciate those things. So he was very disappointed in this whole thing, but he continued in his job, continued to do whatever he did, and he had a moderate amount of success. There was one time that this Bachel came to New York and he heard about the Rebbe. He actually wrote a Rebbe a letter. And he asked him the same question to the Rebbe. And the Rebbe, the Lubavitch Rebbe, answered him from the Tanya. And in the Tanya, the Alt Rebbe explains that God likes two kinds of food, so-called sweet food, and sour food. If I give you just to eat honey, will it be nice? No, just honey, no. Sometimes you need a little tang in the food, sour food. It says, some Jews gives God sweet kind of food. What does it mean? God looks at them at, at their work as sweet food. What does it mean, sweet food? They learn Gomorrah. They daven with great kavana. They have emotions. You know, they go through life with enjoyment and enthusiasm towards Torah and mitzvahs. It's sweet to God to see those people. But he says there's a delicacy that God likes more than sweet. You know, sugar is nice, but sugar is never a delicacy. Nobody ate sugar and says, sweetness, this is delicacy. You know what it's delicacy? Delicacy is when you take something which is sour, something which might not even taste a little bit good. It has a little bit of a zing, you know, like a spicy food, like lemon, you know, like something which has a zest. And from that, you turn it into great food. It says that God likes even more than the sweet food. It says, some people love the sweetness of Torah and mitzvahs. For some people, it comes with hard work. They can't just learn a page of Gomorrah, another page of Gomorrah, and enjoy it. It's struggle. It's pain. It's breaking their head. They don't feel the sweetness that the other necessarily can. But when they do it, they turn the sour into sweetness by God. God appreciates it in a different manner. God appreciates those kind of work even more than he appreciates the ones of the sweetness. This is the real delicacies of God. So that's the explanation of the Rebbe says. So, and this is, we're going to see actually what is happening with the Baal Shem Tov and Eliyahu. It's two services of God. Both are sweet. Let's see inside. That's why, in other words, you up to now think that the reason why you're struggling is a bad thing. No. Every time you struggle, you're turning sour into sweet. That's why you you're making a delicacy. You're making a great food for God. So, let's explain this. In Yanosh Eliyahu Anavi, it says, what is Eliyahu did? What we know is Eliyahu Anavi. What do we know him of? What does Eliyahu do? Everybody knows. Every circumcision, that's where we find the chair of Eliyahu. He comes to every circumcision. 
לבוא בליל הפסח, besides that he comes when, on פסח, and ולהציל את רב המנון הסבא. And the third thing he came to save, רב המנון הסבא. We're on page 5, second paragraph. Oh, we're going to, we're going to be reading about him soon. Okay? So let's start at source number 2, to understand this thing. וכן היו ישראל נהוגים למול. It says the Jewish people had a custom to circumcise themselves. All the Jewish people, we know. Since Matan Torah, what do we do? We circumcise ourselves. And I don't know about the desert, but actually after we came to Israel, we all the time circumcise ourselves. עד שנחלקו לשתי ממלכות. Many people don't know this. It didn't last the entire time. This circumcision by the Jews. They were divided into, into two kingdoms. ומלכות אפרים, it was מלכות, the kingship of Ephraim, who was together with Yehuda, מנעו מהם, sorry, with, together with Israel, מנעו מהם את המילה. Where Ahav, King Ahav, together with his wife Isabel, they made a decree on the Jewish people, and the Jewish people, were not allowed to circumcise themselves. He says circumcision is prohibited. So we had a big time in Jewish history where the tribe of Ephraim, the king of Ephraim, forbade the tribes of Israel to circumcise themselves. And Eliyahu stood up, Eliyahu was a human at the time. This is the time of the time This is the time of Eliyahu the prophet who is a human before he went up to heaven. ועמד אליהו זכור לטוב, וקינא קינה גדולה, he became very jealous. And what did he do? נשבע על השמיים, he made an oath, he made the heavens take an oath. What was the oath? שלא להוריד טל ומטר על הארץ. It says, I, I don't allow you, because these people don't circumcise themselves, make sure they're going to be famine over there. No more rain. That's it. He forbade the heavens to bring down rains. ושמעה איזיבל, איזיבל, the queen, heard it, what Eliyahu wanted to do, וביקשה להרוג אותו, and she wanted to kill him. She sent soldiers to kill Eliyahu הנבי. עמד Eliyahu, ברח מארץ ישראל. So Eliyahu ran away from uh, the land of Israel and went into hiding. נגלה עליו הקדוש ברוך הוא, you would think that God is happy with his behavior. God revealed himself to Eliyahu, and he said to him, Malachapo Eliyahu, it says, Eliyahu, why are you hiding over here? Why are you not amongst your brothers? Analo Eliyahu, kano kaniti. He says, Eliyahu, look, I'm a jealous man. I can't see somebody goes against God. And these guys are going against God. They don't circumcise themselves. Amalo Akadosh Bachu, God told to him, לעולם אתה מקנא. It says, it's you always. I always have trouble with you. If you know, there's a saying that Eliyahu is Pinchas. Eliyahu is a Gilgul, is a reincarnation of Pinchas. And what, who is this Pinchas that we know? Kineta Bashitim. It says, you were also a jealous, the same jealousy I see you, in you now, I saw you in a place called Shitim. על גילוי עריות, over there, when the leader of the tribe, of the Shishimon, took a, a Midianite lady, you were also jealous, and also there you did something. שנאמר, פנחס בן אלעזר בן אהרון הכהן, it says, פנחס, the son of Elazar, בן אהרון הכהן, who was a, who you are a Gilgul of, of you, you are a reincarnation of this פנחס, and over there you killed him, And you killed the girl. וכאן אתה מקנא, and also now you're jealous. In other words, you're saying, Eliyahu was making a statement to God. He says, these Jews never listened to you. They didn't listen to you in the desert. They, didn't, they don't listen to you now. They don't do what you want to do. And God is upset. And God is upset. He's saying, you're speaking Lashon Hara about my children. You're saying these Jews are never doing circumcision. You are absolutely wrong, God says. It says, Chayecha, it says, it, I wouldn't call this a punishment, 
Bible says, it's a consequence of what you said to me right now, that the Jews don't circumcise themselves. Because of what you said, Chayecha she'en Yisrael osim brit mila, ad sha'ata ro'e be'necha. I'm going to make sure that you're going to appear in every circumcision from now on. Every time a Jew makes a circumcision, I'm going to make sure you're, you're present. Yes. Because Eliyahu was saying it in a negative um, he says, they never listen to you. So Hashem told him, don't be so sure. Maybe they're not listening to me right now. But they are going, all those who didn't circumcise their sons, don't worry, there will become a day that they will circumcise their son. Eliyahu was making it sound like they're never going to listen to God. And God says, because you said that about circumcision, you're going to be aware that you're going to see that they do circumcise the son in their own time. Maybe not when you want them to circumcise the son, but they're going to do it. So his tikkun was forever a witnessing that the Jews are Very good. And that's why he's also in Pesach. Why we have a rule for Pesach. That in Pesach, you're not allowed to eat the Korban Pesach sacrifice unless you what? Unless you're circumcised. That's why Eliyahu comes on Pesach. Because if we're eating the Pesach sacrifice, it means that everybody is circumcised. That's why Eliyahu is right there. Same idea. But we're not going to discuss it right now. Mitkanis kinu chachamim, from here the sages established, shiyu si mushav kibud lemalach habrit. That every time there's a circumcision, we have a, the chair of Eliyahu. Shenikra Eliyahu zal malach habrit. And then Eliyahu, the angel, comes to this bit every time. And let's look at source number three, the Seder guest, like we mentioned just now. Ubiktsat mekomot, in many, it says, in a few, in some places, the custom, nohagim shelolin ola chadarim sheyeshanim sham bleil Pesach, not to lock the doors on the night of Pesach. Ki uleil shimurim lekol bnei Yisrael edorotam, it's a night of protection for the entire Jewish people for forever. It's a remembrance that God is going to take us out also from this exile. And there's another reason, in, because if, since God is on Pesach took, it out, took us out of our first exile, we're, we're wanting that God is going to come take us out of Pesach of the, this exile. That's why we leave the door open. Because when Eliyahu comes, he should find what? The door open so that he can tell, tell us to come. Come back to Israel. Ve'im yavo Eliyahu, so that if Eliyahu come, imtza petach patuach ve'netzel ikrato bimera. We'll be able to come up to the land of Israel quickly. Ve'noagim b'mnot elu, and then we have the custom, limzog kos acher yoter ma'mesubim, ve'kurim oto kos Eliyahu navi. We also have another kos, and another cup that we do in Pesach, and we call this cup the cup of Eliyahu navi. Just... Pay attention to something very interesting. In, do, in both those um, two cases, there's many Brits, many circumcision that happens in a Jewish pe- in, for the Jewish people every day. Eliyahu comes to each and every Brit, to each and every circumcision. Also on Pesach, there's one million houses, Jewish houses that we have Pesach taking place. And Eliyahu comes, is able to come to each and every house why? Because he's an angel. He can split up into many things. Okay? Just have that in mind. Because it's going to change soon. So Rabbi Shimon in the Zohar now is going to ask a question. He says, I don't understand this. Rabbi Shimon says. Amar Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon asks a question. This is Rabbi Shimon by Yochai. Famous Tana. And he tamel Eliyahu. He says, I, I have a question on Eliyahu Navi. שהוא חגור מותניים ובעל שיער, למה לא בא ונמצא בבית אידרה שלנו בזמן שמתגלו אלו דברים הקדושים? It says, look, we have a conference of the sages every once in a while, and it is known that when Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai, Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai used to have a conference with the students, it wasn't only the students who are alive who came. There were neshamas from Gan Eden who used to come. Abraham was there, Yitzchak was there, Moshe was there. 
There were all those holy neshamas also coming to listen to the words of Rabbi Shimon by Yochai. So he says, I don't understand. Everybody is here listening to what we're discussing. And who's missing? Eliyahu. Eliyahu. Eliyahu is gone. He's not missing. Where is he? Why isn't he here? Everybody else came to the class. Eliyahu is stayed home. <laughs> oh, man. but so that is busy. So it says, Betoch kach ba Eliyahu, so it says, as he is talking, Eliyahu appears. Veshloshani tzutzei or heiru befanav. And there was like sparks of light that shined in his face. Amar le Rabbi Shimon le Eliyahu, so Rabbi Shimon says to Eliyahu, Ma'u atam shelo yanim tza adoni bemakom, shenitztairu venechgagu sezot edinim shel HaKadosh Buchu. It says, why, where, where were you when we were revealing the secrets of God? that you are not even aware of it? It says, where were you? Why didn't you come to class? In that joyous day, where were you? Why didn't you come? So Eliyahu says to Rabbi Shimon, It says, you should know. It says, seven days before you had this conference that you called everybody, נבחרו לפני הקדוש ברוך הוא כל אותם המלאכים ונשמות הצדיקים שיבואו וימצאו עמו בבית אידרה שלכם לשמוע סודות התורה. There was, God decided who's going to come down to listen to the secrets of the Torah, which angels are going to come down, which נשמות, which souls are going to come down, yeah? וגם אני הייתי מזומן לבוא לשם, and God told me, hey, you should also go. Yeah, he told me, you should also go. ולא מימני מעניין אידרה. It says, I, I didn't, I, I did not not come because of what? Because I didn't know about it. I knew about it. I knew about the secrets. That's not why I didn't come. I appreciate it. וביקשתי מהקדוש ברוך הוא להימצא ולבוא לאימו לאידרה. I, I, me myself, there was nothing more I wanted to do than to come. אבל אז קשר הקדוש ברוך הוא על כתפי עניין שליחות. But unfortunately, then God came and he sent me on a mission. He forced me. He forced me on a mission. That's what he actually says. ולא יכלתי לבוא, and I wasn't able to come. What was the thing? כי בזה היום, because on that day, when you had this conference, what happened? שלח אותי הקדוש ברוך הוא לעשות ניסים לרב אמנון הסבא וחבריו. God sent me to make miracles to רב אמנון הסבא and his friends. What happened? שנמסרו למלכות, רב אמנון הסמא was a great sage, somebody snitched on him to the king, to Rome, והיו כלואים בארמון המלך, they were jailed in the palace of the king, ועשיתי להם נס, and I was sent to make for them a miracle, I had a mission, שהפלתי בשבילם את הכותל של היכל המלך. I made the wall of the palace of the king fall. It was an earthquake, whatever there was, and the whole wall fell. Val yedei ze yatsu misham venitzolu, and through this they escaped. Venikshavu ben kshavav, the haynu shenishavu anashim kfutim tachat amapolet. There were many people that were captured, that were trapped under this um, under this wall that fell. At shemet to mem hei sarim. Until 45 officials were killed there in total. And my job was to do what? To save Rav Amnuna. My job was to take them by the hand and run with them out of the city so that there would be escape. I took them to the valley of Ono. If anybody knows where Kiyat Ono is today. Yeah? בקפיצת הדרך וניצולו, I took them there in קפיצת הדרך in a miraculous way and I saved them. And then what did I do then? והזמנתי והכנתי לפניהם לחם ומים. And then I took, put in front of them bread and water, כי לא אכלו זה שלושה ימים, because in the palace they were jailed, they didn't eat already or didn't drink for three days. וכל היום ההוא שהייתם באידר לא נפרדתי מהם. And the entire day when you were in the conference, I had to stay with them, I had to sustain them. But the... That, that ah, very good. He could be in multiple Excellent question. He could be in many places at the same time. What, what are you talking about? He, 
we find him in all the Britim together, in Pesach, he's everywhere together. What, what's going on? So let's understand. The difference between it is what? When, God, when Eliyahu comes to a circumcision, or Eliyahu comes to the Pesach Seder, he comes as an angel. He doesn't have a body. He's not physical. He doesn't come in the physical form. He comes in a spiritual form. But when he came to save Rav Amnuna Saba, for whatever reason, because Rav Amnuna Saba is such a special sage, in order to honor him, he put himself into a physical body. So now he's in a physical body, he's not capable to be everywhere else at the same time. That's the story. That's a continuum. Very good. Very good. So it looks like when the angel comes in a physical body, maybe he's not able to, be, to come in other places. If he's not in a physical body, maybe he is. That's what it looks like over here. And now we can understand something else. That he couldn't come to the conference of Rabbi Shimon. He was busy saving Rav Amnuna Saba. Like we said before, we can find him in many circumcisions at the same time. And also on Pesach, he comes to many places at the same time. Why couldn't be in two places at the same time? In a circumcision, he comes without a body. It's only a spark of Eliyahu. And a spark can be in many places at one time. When it comes to honor the righteous, he came in, a, in his real physical body. Once he has his physical body, he cannot be in two places at the same time. Very good. Maybe he wouldn't be able to be there. Maybe he wouldn't be able to be there. Good question. Or may, yeah? So page number eight. So similarly, in Yanoshil Eliyahu limsor shlichuyot lechachamim. So we have to understand. Eliyahu has a mission. And the last mission is the most important. What is the last mission of Eliyahu? He's the one who's going to come and announce that what? The Mashiach, the Mashiach is here. It says Eliyahu is going to come before Messiah. Why is Eliyahu going to come? Everybody knows, just like in America right now, and in Israel, unfortunately, right now, everything stems from Israel. It's actually the opposite. Because it's in Israel like this way, it is in America this way. There's, the Jews are not in unity. There's two sections of Jews who are in each, each other's throat, fighting completely against each other. Just like in America, you have the Democrats and Republicans. In Israel, you have the two groups in each other's throats. Eliyahu, what's going to be his job? To make unity between these two groups. And and to tell us about the arrival of Mashiach. And for that, he's going to come how? In a physical body. And that's why God sent Eliyahu Anavi with his body up to heaven. He wanted his body to be in the world of Yetzira. We're not going to discuss what's all about right now, it's on our time. But when it, there is a necessity for it. the body right now is preserved over there. And where there's a necessity, it doesn't, get, it doesn't go back to dust. It stays over there. But when there's a necessity, his body this, the soul of Eliyahu comes back to his body and comes down here. And that's how Eliyahu becomes complete. 
So let's go back to the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov, what did the Baal Shem Tov come down into this world to do? Shebezman leidat the Baal Shem Tov, it says at the time of the Baal Shem Tov was born, I think the Baal Shem Tov was born at 1798, 1698. 1698. Yeah, almost in hands. Hayub Israel, the Jewish people at the time, It was a terrible time to the Jewish people. There were pogroms in Europe at the time, constantly. Not only there were pogroms at the time, this is the time just after Shabtai Tzvi, if you're the false prophet who were misleading the Jews taking them into Christianity, into becoming a Muslim, into becoming every other kind of religions. And the Jews felt like the, the lowest of the lows. They were never, you know, even in hard times in Russia, the Jews were proud of being Jews. At that time, when the Baal Shem Tov started, yeah, when he was born, the Jews were looking at themselves as like, not second class citizens, as a hundred class citizens. They were, Judaism in the Jewish mind was completely finished. That's why the new Neshama of the Baal Shem Tov came down. Through the coming down of the Neshama of the Baal Shem Tov, his name was Israel Baal Shem Tov, he awakened the Jewish nation. Just like you know, by the way, this is something that you, you, they do everywhere. If someone um, passes out, so you give him salts, smelling salts to bring him away. There's another way if somebody passes out to bring him up, is you say his name constantly. Because the name is, awakens him. He's used to his name. It's a, I think even in America, you, you're told to do it, right? As doctors? As doctors, isn't that one of the things that you do? Yeah. So the Rebbe tells us a story that a few years ago, the Rebbe tells that there was an occurrence with the Friedrich Rebbe, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak. They told him that somebody just passed out for a long time. And the Friedrich Rebbe, the previous Lubach Rebbe, said, "Sheil chashu beozna et shmo." It says, "What you need to do is whisper in her ear, not her name, the name of the Rebbe." It says, "Whisper in her ear the name of the Rebbe." What does the Rebbe mean? The words Rabbi, the words Rabbi, the letters Rabbi means Rosh Bnei Israel. That's an acronym. The word Rabbi is an acronym, Rosh Bnei Israel, the head of the Jewish nation. That's what the word Rabbi means. And this is what they do. They say the name of the Rebbe. And she revived. And at the time, she came back to become strong. So just like the Baal Shem Tov, that his name was Israel, brought back the Jewish nation. He was the rabbi. He was the head of the Jewish nation. And he awakened the Jewish nation back. So does the name of the Friedrich Rebbe awakened her back. He, he was her head. He was her Rebbe. Ve'lechura, but you can ask a question. Ma shayach shmo shel rabbi lo'oto isha? What does the name of the Friedrich Rebbe belong to that woman? She'lechitshat shmo shel rabbi bo'oznat ha'zola. How did it help? And the answer for this, that when, in order to awaken somebody, you need to go to his essence. And his essence, it says about the entire Jewish people, if every generation, all the people are one body. The entire Jewish people are one body. There's a heart, somebody who represents the heart, somebody who represents the legs, somebody who represents the intellect, somebody who represents the smell, somebody who represents the ears. The rabbi is the head of the body. And once you wake in the head, the entire body gets healed. You know, where everything starts from the head. It says, what happens when a person's 
um, passes out. It's the transcendence life force from the person goes away. In other words, it looks like he's not here anymore. His life force is not here anymore. אבל החיות הכללית ישנה, אבל היא doesn't die. All the limbs get its sustenance. They're still there. You can see that the person is still there. The body doesn't rot. The body is still alive. He, just the revealed part of the body is not there. But the body is still there. ועל ידי קריאת השם, through calling out the name, השם שנוגע בחיות הכללית, the name that has to do, it's an outside force of the body, מעוררים את החיות הכללית שתמשך ותבוא בגילוי. You awaken the life to get expressed again in the body. ומזה מובן, and from here we understand, שגם כאשר חסר בחיות הכללית, that also when inside the Jewish nation, let's talk about it in our life. Sometimes in our own life, we go through the motions. We are alive. I'm talking about these Jews. We get up in the morning, we go to Minyan, we put on tefillin, we keep Shabbos, we keep mitzvahs. We are going through the motions. But between you and me, it's not our life. It's like a person who's passed out. We do the physical aspect. Is that what's at the topmost in our minds? No, everybody has this problem. This guy is worried about his kid. This guy is worried about his sustenance. This guy is worried about the honor that they don't give him. Whatever the thing is, we're all constantly worried about other things. In other words, the body is alive. We have the body. We go through the motions. But is there life in that body? Are we awakened? Or are we just going through the motions? So what happens? The, the job of the Rebbe, the job of the Baal Shem Tov was what? Is to take the motions that the Jewish people were doing in everyday life and awaken it. So now they're going to do it with enthusiasm, with life, with energy. They're going to be into it. They're going to really experience Judaism. How? Through revealing a new neshama, the Baal Shem Tov came as the head of the generation. על ידי שלוחשים באוזנו את שמו של הרבי, by whispering in his ear the name of the Rebbe, שנשמתו היא נשמה כללית, that his neshama is the general neshama of the entire generation. וביחס אליה, גם החיות הכללית של נשמת החולה אינה על הפרט, אז יש אחריות גם לחיות הכללית שלו, and then that puts life into the entire nation, or in that individual. וזהו עניין של התערורות בני ישראל מהתעלפות. And this is what it means that the Jewish nation was awakened by the Baal Shem Tov. What do you mean awakened? They did Torah and mitzvahs before the Baal Shem Tov, just like after the Baal Shem Tov. There was a problem though. They did Torah and mitzvahs just like a robot. Without, they felt depressed. They felt, they didn't feel that God is with them. Let's call it this way. They weren't enthusiastic about that God is in their lives. The Baal Shem Tov came and brought godliness back into their lives. That they're not just doing the actions and feeling downtrodden. They're doing the action and feeling like they're the son of the king. Like they're the prince. That's what the Baal Shem Tov brought back. Al yidei yeridat nishmat ha-Baal Shem Tov, when Baal Shem Tov came down in the Shama down here, ba-olam hazeh in this world, כיוון שנשמת הבעל שם טוב היא נשמה כללית של בני ישראל, because it was a general נשמה of the entire people. So now, וכיוון שעניינו של בעל שם טוב, so what is the, what is the job of the בעל שם טוב? The job of the בעל שם טוב was לעורר את כל בני ישראל. It was to awaken the entire Jewish people. Because even at the time of the בעל שם טוב, those people who learned Torah, they were awakened. They learned Torah with highest, with energy. They felt Jews and they were proud Jews. But you know what happened to the masses, to 95% of the Jewish nation at the time? Do you know how they felt? They felt, like I said, like not third class, like 10th class citizens. Everybody was better than them. The Baal Shem Tov came to tell him, no, you can be Jews and with full of life, just like in the time of what? Of Mashiach. Just like in the time of King David. You can be proud of who you are. You can do everything with energy. And he went down to whom? 
גם הפחות שבפחותים והקל שבקלים מהם. He went down to the lowest of the lows of the Jewish people. לעבור ולהגיע גם למדרגות היותר תחתונות עד למטה מטה ביותר. He came down to the lowest of the lows. וגם שם לפעול התעוררות והקשר עם הקדוש ברוך הוא. And also by them to develop an awakening awareness of godliness so that they can appreciate God. In the simple people, in those people who didn't learn Torah, in those people who not necessarily understood all the things, people who didn't know how to read and write. לכן הוא צרח ובמילא היה רצונו שיהיה אצלו העניין ואל עפר תשוב. That's why the Baal Shem Tov says I want to go down not to become a spiritual being like whom? Like Eliyahu. That's not the mission. The mission is to go down into the physical world. What does it mean into the physical world? Look, we all understand that learning Kabbalah, if we will be able to learn Kabbalah, Everybody wants to learn Kabbalah. Imagine you had the brain to learn Kabbalah like Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Who's going to give up such a thing? Everybody would want such a thing. Everybody would want to experience godliness in such a manner. The Baal Shem Tov come and says, that's not the entire of Judaism. You have to bring Judaism not only to your intellect, not only to your emotions, but you have to bring this energy, this life, Also, you know to wear to your business. Also, to the way you eat. Also, to the way you sleep. Also, to the mundane life, to the lowest part. Bring it back down to dust. In other words, intellect represents spirituality. Emotion represents spirituality. It says that's not the only way you connect to God on the spiritual realms. The Baal Shem Tov is talking about to the simple people. You connect to God by making sure that you do your business according to the Torah and you don't cut corners. And that you, you, you connect to God by when somebody is mean to you and he's not nice to you, nevertheless, you treat him with kindness. Even though maybe he doesn't deserve it. Maybe he doesn't. Yeah? That's what it means to bring it down to earth. This is what the Baal Shem Tov says. I want to bring it down to the lowest level of... Judaism I want to bring down to the lowest level, not just to the intellect part of Judaism, to the emotion part of the intellect, to the act, to the simple acts that every day we do, and not to the acts in shul, because the acts in shul and learning, that's where, that's spirituality. That's Eliyahu's job, it's not my job. My job is to bring it down into the field, into the business world, into the relationship world, into the place where God is not felt. the lowest into the dust of the world, that's where I want to be. So this is the message of the Baal Shem Tov. That doesn't, and by the way, as you can see, that ultimately it's not just the message of the Baal Shem Tov. We know that this is the message of who also? Also of Eliyahu Anavi. Hashem is preparing Eliyahu Anavi, the spiritual Eliyahu the prophet, with all the spirituality for the day that Eliyahu is going to come back, how? In a physical body. When Eliyahu is going to announce that Mashiach is here, he's going to come back not as Eliyahu Navi that comes back to the bris, to the circumcision, or to Pesach. His Eliyahu is going to come back, he's the, let's put it this way, the first person to be resurrected, to come back to earth, is whom? Eliyahu. Eliyahu. He is going to be the beginning of the resurrection of the dead. That's Eliyahu. He's going to be the first person to become a dead. So it's not only the Baal Shem Tov who's doing it. The Baal Shem Tov is even explaining that this is the mission. That this is what Eliyahu, all the spirituality of Judaism, is actually all the Torah learning, all the nice things that we do in the tefillin. And this. Everything has to do with when you go out to the world, bring godliness into that.